Silverback here. And today, I have a tale of victory. I have a tale of glory. How one strong and determined man came up with the idea that he's going to help other men learn how to trust themselves before they trust others. Hey guys, OG Silverback here. And um, hey, I'm going to try something different for you guys, man. I'm going to, I'm trying to reach a lot of you guys, man. I'm trying to help a lot of you guys and I got problems and I got issues, man. But that doesn't mean that I can't help you guys, man. Because uh, I remember when I was growing up in the hood back east, there's a lot of winos and junkies. And a wino is a dude that had this stuff called MD-2020 and Thunderbird. What's the price? 50 twice. And then um, the guys would just get up in the morning. They was like homeless dudes. They just hit that, hit that, hit. They'd just be laid out, man. And, and, and back east, they got these things called alleys, man. Because there's so many skyscrapers. And if you want to go to school, sometimes you want to just get there quickly and you cut through the alley. But sometimes you got to be careful. And I'll, I'll tell you a story about that because the muggers are in there. But anyway, then they got junkies, dude. It'd be just a lot of dudes on heroin, dude. They'd just be like just bent over in the, in the alleys and stuff. The alleys is like some of the most dangerous places back in New York and Philly and Detroit and Chicago. But anyway, I used to see these junkies and, uh, why those, man, I used to be talking shit. And my dad was like, Hey man, you know, in this life, dude, you can learn from anybody. And I was like, well, what can I learn from a junkie or, a, um, or a wino? And he goes, you can learn what not to do. And so I just wanted to give you that opening this morning because, guys, I was looking in the comment section, and I was just being honest with you guys about my experience in, in YA prison because, dude, like, how can you have a relationship with anybody unless you know the full truth? Now, I'm not asking you to respect what I did, you know what I mean, or even understand what I did, you know what I mean, because it was foul. It was, you know, it was crazy. But all I'm saying is, like, you got to respect the fact that I'm truthful with you because, you know, any relationship, whether it's a work relationship, family, your homeboys, whatever, if it's not built on trust and you don't know what a motherfucker really is, you're being deluded. I'm not deluding anybody no more. It's 2021. For those of you guys that aren't have a large enough constitution, that's why I taught you the words empathy and compassion to put yourself in my shoes. And, you know, a lot of dudes in the comments were like, oh, you know, you shouldn't have put yourself in that situation. Okay, I got it. All I'm saying for you square dudes is like, I think this is what's great about movies in America. What what a movie does, guys, and what these YouTube channels do, guys, is they allow you to experience someone else's life with the horror and the bad mistakes and, and, the, and the fucking uneventful things that go on without you actually having to live it. Like some of these directors and producers, they're so good at raising your emotions and stuff, dude. They can make you laugh, cry, scared, mad, whatever. And it's good because you get to experience that specific situation without having to live it. It's unfortunate for me. I had to live it because, you know, my dad convinced me I was a gangster and a barbarian, and but I hadn't yet developed the physicality to stand on my own. And so I had to rely on my homies who, you know, that's what this video is about, man. So who do you trust when you go to prison, man? So I'm just going to get straight to the point, man, because I'm, um, you know, a lot of you guys, man, nobody's ever happy here, man. I want you guys to take a look at your own life. And you, you sit back as armchair quarterbacks, and you, it's very easy to judge. You know, like, dude, I had six, I had I had over 6,000 subscribers. And then when I told that, I had over 6,000 subscribers New Year's Eve. And I was going to make a move. I was going to make a video say, hey, man, thank, raise the roof. Thank you guys for the. 6,000, over 6,000 subs, man. I'm finally arrived. And then when I made the, I, because I make a video before looking at the fucking comments. And I made the video, you know, where I was crying, man, because I, I had to relive the horror, dude. Like, you, you guys don't know what it's like to get your ass kicked every day. And I thank the Lord. I thank Allah and I thank Buddha that you have not lived through that, bro, because I got psychological traumas and scars. So for those of you who were laughing at my pain, you know, God have mercy on you because karma's a motherfucker. But man, I was like, <laughs> I didn't look, I didn't look at the comments till after. And dude, you guys unsubscribed in the hundreds, man. You know, you're talking about, oh, you're foul, you're gay. So let me ask you a question before I get into my story, guys. I'm, this is to square, guys. I'm no longer talking to gang members because this is what I did in prison, guys. As I got down to level three, level two, 
I really understood what prison was about in California. Like at level four, it was more fair based because there were so many lifers, bro. So many sick fucks in prison, bro. Like Charles Manson's and uh, uh, Richard Ramirez's and, and Night Stalkers and just do horrendous stuff you can't even imagine in your mind. It, it reminded me of being in combat when some of my um, some of the guys I was in the platoon with, dude, and we had a mission. Hey, we was we was on a recon squad. We had a mission of hey, go into the village and find out where the troops are because we were looking for Noriega. This was my first time in combat. Go into the village and find out where the, where the troops are. Because when you go to countries like Panama and Vietnam, they have, um, they have what's called friendlies, man. So what a friendly is, is like when, you know, like when you go to Vietnam or Panama, you go into these restaurants or cafes or whatever. And, you know, you might want to get some water or some coffee or something. It's cause you're going on these, um, you're going on these routes. And so as you go through the villages and stuff, you know, some of the people act nice to you and stuff. Hey, I'm out of KGI. Thank you for being here and all that. But they're really double agents, bro, even the women and the children. And so what they do is when you when you go through, they, they contact their, their husbands and brothers who are in the fucking rebellion army. And they tell you, they tell them how many men you got, the formation you got, where you're headed, because it's their country. And so then you think they're cool and then you find out they're not. And that's how in Vietnam, I asked my uncle about it, why they have baby killers and rapers, bro. Because when the, when the, uh, when the American GIs came back, they were getting spit on, become baby rapers, you know, baby killers and rapers. And I asked my uncle about it. He goes, dude, if you go through town to town and you got women acting like they nice, man, and little kids coming up to you and they got grenade, they got grenades on their back and you pick them up and they blow up and, it, you know, women there say, oh, come on, we love a GI a long time. And you put, you go up in them and they got a razor blade put vertically inside the vagina and it splits your cock open like a fucking ween uh, like a um like a ballpark fucking sausage bro and then, you know what i mean you, you see dudes like serving you eggs and then he pulls out a fucking a machine gun bro you just don't man you just go into the fucking villages and you ask them hey i'm gonna ask you one time where's the people at and when they don't tell you you know if you just kill them you're not gonna get any information but dude i've seen i've seen some of my platoon guys do some horrendous shit that i wouldn't even do man like, I would never for once, dude, I, I'm being honest with you, dude, I, I, I would never for once cut a little dude's fucking um, chin. I'm not cutting his neck. L listen to me. I'll cut his fucking, you cut underneath his chin, bro, and then you use a you use a, you use that peeling knife I was talking about, and then you grab his face, and you tell his mom, where are the, where are the fucking guys? I'm only asking one time, and he, they don't tell you. You start ripping the little dude's face up this way. You start peeling it up this way because your skin comes off. It's just a layer. It's called your epidermis. And in the military, you learn some crazy ways to torture people. And you start peeling the skin up until the mom tells you where the fucking people are. And then you do some horrendous shit to the mom before you kill them because you're not playing anymore. And for those of you who haven't experienced that, it's very easy to sit back and say what you would do or what's horrendous or what you would not do. So anyway, to the story, man, what I learned very early on, I went to YA with a, what I thought was my homies, right? Youth Authority Prison. And I thought they was my homies. And this is my first time in Youth Authority Prison, which is different. Like the difference between Youth Authority Prison and um, Juvenile Hall is this. And I just want to share this with you. Um, it's just like the difference between the county jail and prison. And when I say prison, I'm not talking about level one level two to me you know level one level two is the same as being in a county and i'll tell you why i say that in california i never did that kind of time back east but in california this is how i know because i've seen a lot of guys man when i uh when i went to sentencing some guys have on orange jumpsuits because they have um i think they have misdemeanors and i had a red jumpsuit on and others like me because i have very serious like violent felonies like every time i went to the fucking County jails from violent shit. And so, um, I, I, you, when you're in court, you hear other people, like when they, when you go to court, they shackle you all up and they put these shackles on your arms and the, the ones on the legs hurt the, well, the officers, man, they would always put my handcuffs on too tight, man, because I was a beast mode dude. I, I, I fucking beat some officers up before. And that's another story. Cause dude, when you don't give a fuck, you don't give a fuck. So uh, they, they, they always put my handcuffs on too tight. And then they 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 put they they put this chain through this belt so your hands are down here, guys. Like your hands are down by your waist. And then they put these big ass handcuffs or ankle cuffs on your 
on your legs and there's a chain that runs through and it's hard to walk, but it, it sure hurts. So you're, you're on this chain and you go through the court and then they sit you all down. And I don't remember if they unchain your, 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 your legs or not, but I know my hands stayed cuffed up. I don't, I don't, maybe it didn't, I don't remember. But one thing I do know for sure, you're in court with all the other dudes because it's called on the on the on the ballot or the ticket or whatever. There's a time they just got to process all these inmates. So you sit there, man, and you hear these dudes get like, oh, you know, we sentence you to two years for, uh, you know, shoplifting and, um, you know, you know, um, whatever, stealing the grand old lady's panties, whatever the fuck, the little petty crimes, right? And you're sitting there. And they go, well, since you've been in the county already for six months, you can go ahead and um, you can go ahead and uh, you can stay in the rest of the time in your county, or you can go to the honor ranch and do a year there. So this is very equal. So when I'm speaking on this video about who do you trust in prison, I'm I'm speaking specifically of level three, level four. So I'm not going to even talk about the maximum, medium stuff anymore. I'm so tired of you guys, man. I'm so drained, man. I, I'm just off topic. Um, because of that video I made, I was very emotional, dude. Like some, I, I, I had a long talk with Big Hurt from uh, Big Hurt Nine One Six. He's like, he's like a good friend of mine now because you know he knows a real dude. So he, I don't really care what you guys say. Well, this is Big Hurt said to me. He's like, dude, these troll dudes, man. You know what I mean? They ain't got nothing better to do. Their lives are so miserable. They see a real dude like you. Uh, the, you've accomplished so many things that they'll never be able to do that they can't even fathom it in their head because they've been raised by single moms. A lot of you trolls, dude, you've been in your same neighborhood all your life, bro. And I'm going to tell you what the problem is with that. When I go back east to New York, because what happened when my parents divorced, my parents divorced, man. So my dad went to prison. We had to move from uh, New York to Philly to Chicago. to Det No, we moved from New York to Detroit, to Chicago. Um, and then we ended up in Philly, man. So we got settled there. We got finally got our welfare because there's a waiting list to get on welfare to get the money, not the food stamps. So we finally get the welfare. So we, we doing good in Philly, man. I mean, good as you can do in the hood. And so the years later, my dad comes out of the pen. But my dad, when Puerto Ricans moved, to New York, when Puerto Ricans moved from New York, there's two places that Puerto Ricans congregate, like cucarachas or cockroaches. It's New York and Florida. My, you motherfuckers never travel. It's like little fucking Puerto Rico, man. You go to New York or Florida. It's a bunch of them motherfuckers, man. So my dad gets out of prison. He comes to visit us in Philly. And then him and my mom get back together. And that's why I got that's why I got my little brother and sister after that. But the problem is my mom had became a Christian. And while my dad was in prison, he became a Muslim, dude. And uh, if you, for those of you who don't know, Christians and Muslims do, they, they, they just don't mix. So then, you know, they try to make it work. It out, it didn't work. My dad divorced my mom because my mom stayed down while he was in the pen, but she couldn't visit him because we was moving all around. We was just poor. So my dad goes back to New York. And so back then you didn't have to do all this fucking going to court and, and, and child stuff, all this stuff. It was just an agreement. Hey, my boys and shit. In the summer vacation, they come to New York, and then during the winter, you motherfuckers can be in Philly with your mom. So I got homies in New York. I got homies in Philly. You know what I'm saying? I got homies in Chicago because I got family. I got homies in Detroit. You know what I mean? And so, uh, you know, just because my dad, now that he's out of the pen, you know, he's you know, doing better, and we're traveling around. So anyway, um, I lost my train of thought. See, that's why I be scripting. Now you motherfuckers know. And I'm, I'm just trying something new. So anyway, man, um, the point I was making, which I don't even know the point I was making, man. You know what I mean? So, uh, fuck, man. So so anyway, um, I've done more things than most of you guys can imagine, man. Because, dude, I'm all, I'm like, you know, like this dude I respect says to me, man. He says, dude, you know, you're interesting because you've been to so many different places. And so on the one hand, that's good, homie. You know, you, you've been to a lot of different places. But on the other hand... You know, it's bad because you always got to try to fit in. You always got to try to figure out the narrative. And that's what that's what I learned about trust. So Big Herc was like, man, don't worry about these troll dudes because all they, they ain't got nothing better to do than come on here and try to nitpick my stories and make me go off. And he convinced me to start taking my medication. So I'm, I'm medicated right now. I didn't take the Thorazine, guys, because that's way that's a way out thing. But I'm on this other um, psych med that makes me real, like, mellow, man. So anyway, 
the back the thing to who you trust in prison. So as I learned back east of the uh, youth authority, even though I thought they were my so-called homies, man, everybody's got their own agenda. So what, what this video is about, guys, is when you first when you first go to prison, it actually starts in the county jail, man. Because once you understand that you're going to prison, like you know when you're going to prison, because what will happen is your your attorney talks to the district attorney, and then they offer you a deal. They say, hey, you know, based on your crimes, we're going to bound you over or bind you over, whatever. All that means is they have enough evidence now to take your ass to jury trial. And I just want to be honest with you guys, man. I made a mistake. I went to jury trial, man, because I thought I was so smart. You know what I mean? I thought I knew the system so well. I thought I had a good-ass lawyer. But I'm going to tell you something about these lawyers, too, man. The lawyers, man, they took all my money, homie. Like, um... And unless unless you're in a mafia, dude, like serious mafia, and you got some serious mafioso connections, dude, where you got like lawyers in, on retainer, because um a couple of dudes that I met in the cartel was telling me, hey, we like the way you do business, but you got to get a lawyer on retainer. And even somebody in my family, I'm not going to say their name either, because they, they, they in the game deep. And they was like, get a lawyer on retainer. I was like, I thought I was above the law. But what I want to share with you guys is, you can't even trust your lawyers, dude. Like when you're paying them all, they 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 empty my bank accounts because I think what the agenda is, when you're a criminal and you sell it, you 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 taking cocaine money, you know, you, you you getting pure cocaine from fucking Colombia, dude, and then you're cutting, you you're, you're stepping on it twice. So let's say you get one key and you step on it, you got two keys, man, and it's still so pure you step it on again, and then you got you got four keys, right? So then you distribute that to the people. And the neighborhood, dude, you got so much fucking dope. It's amazing. And then um, when you when you cook it up in the rocks or whatever. But um, fuck, man. Um, anyway, I took the cocaine money and I was just buying houses, dude, because I was a real estate agent, dude. And then I was turning them in. I don't know if you guys call them trap houses or whatever, but I was turning them into houses where I would have my workers. You know, well, actually, I would do it. I would drop off weight like I take fucking quarter key. And I draw. I go to different my different houses. I had three houses and two apartments, man. And I just drop it off, and I tell the dudes what I wanted because it's like I learned from the uh, I learned from the dude in the cartel, man, to do things on consignment. And the reason being, and I want to be honest with you guys, is because it's about trust. I'm trusting you that you're smart enough to want to do business with me, and you're smart enough to know I will kill your bitch ass because first of all, I'm on drugs. Second of all, I'll fuck my life off. Third off. I, my family left me fourth off. I don't want to even live like this. I'm a walking zombie. So if, like the movie juice with Tupac, man, I ain't shit. I ain't never going to be shit. And if, man, you ain't going to be shit. Whenever I say you're going to be shit. Cause I got the dude. I'm like, God, I got the, I got the ability to determine when you live or die. Cause I'm not worried about dying. Cause I'm down with the fucking sickness. I'm down with Diablo. Right? So you can't even trust your lawyers, man. So what I'm saying is once you go to court, and you get your, you get bound over. They offer you a deal. And here, I'm gonna give you some game right here. So this is gonna be a long video, guys. So when they give you that first deal, I'm telling you, dude. I'm telling you, I don't care what, how heinous your crime is, or whatever. Don't take the first deal because they want to see what you made of. They want to see if you're hard. They want to trust that. They want to see if what you're representing is what's really real. Don't take the first deal. So then, the reason I know, I went all the way to jury trial, so they offered me a first deal. I was like, get the fuck out of here. Suck my dick. I was doing that stupid shit. So then they came back with a second deal. And dude, I'm just being honest with you. This is my experience. This is where it gets kind of tricky. Um, don't trust them. Don't take the second deal. Right? You got to be like, man, fuck you. Just take me to the pen. Here's, here's the reason I say that to you guys, you, you square dudes that never been in trouble. Because if you've never been in trouble before, bro, what they trying to do, man, is just give you a CDC number so you can be part of the um, the prison industry authority. They don't tell you in California, prisons are an industry, right? So they want to get you, they just want to get you on a, a CDC number because then they can violate you. They can get all this money for the halfway houses. It's a, it's a bracket. Don't even trust the United States government. So then when they, when they give you the second deal, don't take it. But dude, Vato, Wood, homie, my man, you know? When they give you that third deal, bro, if, 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 you, if you ain't, man, take it. Take it, trust this. Take that third deal because, dude, I didn't take the third deal because I'm going to be. 
I'm gonna be honest with you, dude. I was hey, I'm I'm telling you the truth here. I'm never gonna fucking leave out of missions, you know. I'm trying to be respectful to the dudes that's still in the game who called oh yeah. I had some of the biggest drug dealers, man, in this area, like the biggest shot callers in this area, call me on my phone personally and say, Happy New Year, man. I'm proud of what you're doing, man. But just don't be saying my fucking name. You can tell all your fucking stories because they're very interesting. You know, you just got big, some, you got some big balls, homes. But don't say my fucking name. And I said, man, we already clear on that already, homie. Like, you ain't got to keep calling. He said, no, because I like you, man. I like your stories. You're interesting. But don't, because sometimes you don't take your medication, man. I said, even when I don't take my medication, I know what the fuck not to say. And they said, okay, homie, happy new year to you. So I got some calls like that. So anyway, I was on drugs, guys. And I was like, I was like, I seen these other dudes. And I'm, I'm not going to make this a racial thing, bro. I'm not. I'm, I'm just going to be honest with you. It's not. A, I'm mixed, so it's not racial. But I seen white dudes that had like, you know, for example, they had a quarter key of soft, which is cocaine is not cooked. And then I seen black dudes, man. Or brown dudes, man, with a quarter key of, like, crack cocaine that's cooked. You know what I mean? And then their sentencing would be totally different, dude. Like, I was seeing white dudes getting uh, put on drug treatment programs. And they got these... Back then, they had these living drug treatment programs. You could get sentenced to a drug a treatment program. That's your actual sentencing. And if you don't finish the program, then they'll send you to prison. So I'm like, oh, dude, I'm the biggest drug addict in the fucking country because I, I hey bro i smoked an ounce every day like every day after i made my three thousand dollars like after i paid off all my workers and my houses and the police i was paying off police because they're filthy motherfuckers i can't say all but all the ones i know are filthy so let's put it like that i can't say all i don't know all cops but the motherfuckers i know they had their hands out man and they knew what i was doing so after i paid off all the cops and shit and all that um, yeah, and I even, I did, even did have a lawyer on returning, man, a, a fucking a retainer of crooked ass motherfucker. But anyway, let me stay on track. So after I made 3000, I get a fucking ounce and I get a bunch of uh, hot whores, man. And we would just get naked and smoke crack and do fucking nasty shit, which I'm not going to talk about. So anyway, I was the biggest drug addict in the world. Like I was on drugs. And so I was, I was, I was telling them. What I was, because my lawyer was like, "What do you want, man?" I said, "Dude, I want, I want, I want, um, I want, I want twenty four months in the fucking drug, um, you know, a drug rehabilitation program like the white dude got." And he do, dude, dude, you are you are fucking deluded. You didn't shot people, bro. You didn't fucking pistol with people, bro. You didn't kicked in doors, dude. You didn't fucking, I uh, man, I had I held people for ransom, all kind of crazy shit, bro. And I'm, I'm going to another. Dude, he, she said, "Dude, you're on a whole nother level." Plus, they caught you with all this fucking, you know. And then when they when they raided my houses, dude, there was so much dope in there and shit. So anyway, you're not getting it. So I went to jury trial, bro. And they fucked me, bro. So then when I get to the fucking when they get to the county, bro. I couldn't trust anybody because I had shot some dudes that was part of this big family. And then they thought I, I robbed him, but it wasn't that. And I just couldn't trust because I couldn't trust it. I didn't want, like, dude, I got this thing. I don't want anybody in my close perimeter, bro. Because then I, I just, so I didn't trust anybody. But for you square dudes, when you get to the county jail, just, um, just be leery, you know, um, what's to say? Keep a motherfucker at arm's length. And what that means is, dude, like, Motherfuckers will tell you all these stories that they, you know, because a lot of people are career criminals. So they've been to the prison before and they've been to the county before and they know when you were square and they're going to be telling you all this stuff to try to be your friend. Let me put it to you like this, guys. In, in prison, in the county jail, respect is given. I gave everybody respect to they disrespect me, but trust is earned. And I'm going to tell you why, bro. Everybody's got an agenda. And here's the thing I want to tell you before this video gets too long. So all that, you know, like when I was training martial arts, man, I was training this place called Bojuka Ryu. It stands for Boxing, Judo, Jiu-Jitsu, Karate, and Wrestling. This dude was a, a, a brother from Missouri, and then he was my hand-to-hand -hand combat instructor. And he went to Japan for fucking 20 years, invented his own martial arts, came back. He does a beast mode, dude, man. And he's the first one to invent mixed martial arts. They don't give him credit for it because this country is just full of shit. But anyway, this dude taught me how to fight from the ground. I mean, fight, fight for real. He used to make us go to all kind of competitions, man, and fucking walk through bad neighborhoods, man. You know what I mean? With money hanging out of our pocket. Just stupid shit because he's from Missouri, homie. If you motherfuckers never been to Missouri, 
and God bless you. So anyway, um, a lot of a lot of military dudes trained there, dude, because he was like a, he was he used to be our hand to hand combat instructor. He opened up his own dojo. He had a lot of military dudes. Like back then, there was Fort R D L I Naval Post. All these military dudes. We like full of testosterone, right? So, dude, with a lot of us, man, when when uh when me and my my homies that was bouncers, we be we signed up for the correctional officers. But a lot of dudes I knew from the military signed up to be correctional officers, sheriff, CHP, police, post office, all that. It's called civil service points. So, dude, when I get to the fucking county jail, man, I had some homies in there that I knew. And here's the problem. I want here's what I wanted to share with you guys about trust. Like I trusted my homies because they. You know, you're right. A lot of you guys are right. You're not supposed to be allowed to practice martial arts. But at the county jail, my homies was the sheriffs. They let me do it out. Dude, dude, I knew these dudes. Like, I knew these dudes. Like, say you got a homie you grew up with, right? You ever see these movies where you got two brothers that grow up? I mean, these are brothers. And one decides to become a gang member and one decides to become like a military dude or a cop. Dude, you, your, your family ties always outride your your street hood affiliation, bro. You ain't never going to kill your brother because some motherfucker in your hood tell that's going to be your brother. And your brother's always going to be honest with you and tell you like, hey, man, they're getting ready to raid this motherfucking shit, homie. You need to fucking, you know, get up out of there. So you guys going to have a special relationship. So when you've been in combat with someone, they like, they're like your brother. So my homies used to let me, when it was their shift, they let me do martial arts, but then it wasn't their shift, stupid ass, I'm not being racist, but stupid ass white boys, man, don't want you practicing your, your, your art, man. They would lock me up for that shit. But I, I like when they lock me up in the county jail because then I'm in my fucking private cell just getting it in, right? So anyway, when I get to San Quentin, man, some of the officers there was my homies, man. So here's what's interesting. Being at San Quentin is reception. To me, guys, reception is not prison. Reception is where you go to get classified. I say level five because back then, guys... At reception, dude, they had levels one, two, three, four, and five. And fifth tier, I was level five. I was up there with the I was up there with lifers and dudes on death row. Like I got to see Tookie Williams and shit. I, I was up there on death row. That's the fifth tier. If you were not on the fifth tier in San Quentin, I'm not gonna tell you to suck my balls because I'm not upset anymore. I'm just gonna tell you, well, you know, we agree to disagree, homie. Because it was the fifth tier was was level five. All the motherfuckers was going to like Folsom, Corcoran, all that. You know what I mean? Even though those, those are level four pins, the, the the heinousness of the crimes, we was all murderers and killers and shit. Level four was just like some hardcore grand theft. I mean, the fourth tier is like some hardcore grand theft auto, you know, bank robber stuff like that. Level th uh, the third tier was like, you know, I mean, it's drug dealers, whatever, stuff like that. And then level two was like, you know, motherfucker, um, he stole the candy bar. And then level one was like, Oh, he, you know, he violated because he was on drugs, right? So anyway, when I get to San Quentin, the, 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 my homies couldn't reject me there because it's, they got to let me through. But I remember I was going to the yard because they would let us out for the yard an hour, a week, or I don't remember. It wasn't that much. And you go to the yard, everybody's on it. So on the yard, I was going to the way pal, and then this, this correctional officer, which my homie goes, hey, inmate, come here. And I go, you know, I had to play the role. I'm like, hey, I couldn't be like, hey, what's up, dog? What's up, baby boy? What's up? I get like, yeah, officer, what's going on? Because um, I wasn't stupid because in the, in the county jail, my homies told me like, hey, man, you know, like the way we talking here and all that shit, man, it's cool. But when you get to the pen, homie, you can't let motherfuckers know that you know motherfuckers that's the police because then they ain't going to trust you, homie, and you're going to have a problem. So I learned about trust right then. I trusted my homies. Them was my homies. And they said, don't be too friendly with the police. So when I get to them, San Quentin, and he said, come here, mate. I go, what's going on? He goes, hey, man, I'm going to tell you something, man. He said, I know you, man. You're a good dude. He said, I'm going to tell you something, man. When you when you go to, to the pen, once you go on them side them walls, you ain't going to never be the same, homie. He said, so either you're going to man up and be the most beast mode dude you've ever been in your life, homie, or you're going to be a turned out little bitch boy, man, because these motherfuckers up in here, homie, they don't respect the military. If they ever find out that you fucking, um, cause I, we all got our paperwork to become correctional officers at the same time. Like I passed the psychological, I mean, I was crazy back then, but not like crazy like I am now. I passed the psychological, the physical, I passed the background check cause I hadn't, I hadn't, I hadn't been in trouble. I hadn't shot anybody yet. And then you get this paperwork. It's called, um, it's called, um, 
Correctional Officer Boot Camp is in Gulp, California. I think that's up by Sacramento, but that's where back then where they 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 they, they trained the correctional officers. He said, if anybody ever finds out, tell me you're gonna you're gonna be marked for death, man. He said, but I'm gonna tell you something. You're a good dude, but just know you ain't you ain't gonna never be the same once you go through them once you go through them walls when you get to the pen. So you're gonna become a beast mode dude, like the most beast mode you ever been, homie. Or you're going to become a little bitch boy. But you can't just be... They, they call me Gomez. That's my last name. He said, you just can't be the same. Because I'm an honorable dude, guys. I'm going to tell you something. I'm an honorable dude. I've done some heinous things. Because, I, you know, drugs make you do shit, man. And they're just like, I need to take my medication. Because it keeps the demons um, down. But, you know, I trusted my homie. But then when I got to the pen, I'm telling you my story. I didn't trust anybody. Because, like, the black dudes that I, did, that I met, I didn't know if they was part of that family that I had shot the, I had shot a couple black dudes, man. You know what I mean? And I got a very recognizable face. Like people that that know me. That's why when I when I speak to you guys and, and people on YouTube, hey man, when I hey man, I go I go out here in, in Salinas, motherfuckers be like, hey OG Silverback, blah blah blah. So I'm I got I got a distinct look. So I couldn't trust any of the any of the black dudes from Central California because I didn't know if like Cause some some black dudes is like this one dude that I respect said to me, and this is I'm not this way, but this is how he is. He said, "Hey, I'm so mature that if I want to if I want if I want to put some work in on the dude, he's never going to know." And to me, that's real gangster level. Like my dad and my uncles taught me to be that way. I've always been a loose cannon. I've never learned how to just be, you know, very stealth and sneaky. Well, in combat, I did, but that's different. I'm talking about when I had a, if I got a problem with the dude, you're going to know because I'm I'm going to tear your head off. I mean, you know what I mean? So anyway, um, I, I couldn't trust the black dudes, dude. And then I, I knew there was a white dude, man. And he told me that, um, hey, man, there was the, the Hells Angels had this lady come in on a visit and she dropped off a bundle of dope and some black dude took her to visit him. And he said, man, don't go to child because there's going to be a race riot. And I trusted this white dude because I knew the white dude from the street. So all I'm saying is this, guys, if you're a square guy and you've never been in the, the mix of anything illegal, you know, um, I'm, I'm going to ask you to trust your gut and to trust yourself and don't trust anybody until they've earned it. And how do you know if they earned it? Because if a dude's offering you anything, dude, you know what I mean? And I, I can't speak for the the white car, the black car, and, and the, uh, none of that. I can only speak for the other car because on, when you, when you go to the prison, they, they classify you, dude. So they, they, cla I, I don't know how these other and I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I don't know how these other mixed race dudes, like biracial dudes or triracial dudes, whatever they are, I don't know how they got out of that. Because when I went to the pen, they classified me as another because they, they asked me, man, what is my, what is your racial eth ethnicity? And I told them I'm Spanish and Puerto Rican, I'm, I'm a West Indian and American Indian. And they go, what the fuck, man? And they put me as an other. And so once I got that uh, um, other classification, the, the dictation on my thing my jacket or whatever then from then on i was marked and then you know the when the blacks I, like i said i couldn't trust them because i had shot some black dudes the whites of course they they'd be on this racial tip man i don't care what shit what nobody say man like i'm just telling you my story i know some i know some cool white dudes man that i know from the street but when they go to the pen and i'm not being disrespectful they're not mad enough or beast mode enough to not play that white boy card shit because dude here's a, here's a reality in the california penal system if you're not a beast mode retarded motherfucker like me you will you will fall into some politics if you're a white boy it's just the way it is man it's just the way it is and i know some cool white dudes except for the white dude i knew from the military who got who had the vehicular mass slaughter he didn't know what to do because he just he's just a white dude from he's just a white dude from from back east man he came to california in the army, and he got a vehicular manslaughter, and he ends up in the pen. And white dudes from back east, they different from white dudes out here, man. I'm just, I'm not trying to be funny, man, but you motherfuckers, you need to watch the Fresh Out um, interview with this dude named Shane, the dude from Boston. And them was the kind of white dudes I grew up. So before you motherfuckers want to be whatever, I don't even care anymore. Them was the kind of white dudes I grew up. They don't give a fuck, motherfucker. Like, they'll tell you their own people. Like, I know this motherfucker from the street, man. Fuck you. They're like me. But anyway, the white dudes out here, they got to follow that narrative, you know what I mean? And then, um, you know, I'll just be honest with you. If you're a Mexican dude, man, you you got to. 
you got to click up, homie. It's just it's the the Mexicans, man. Like this is the problem I got with the brothers back east, man. Because I I affiliate with everybody, I understand with everybody, but dude, they be like talking about, oh man, you know, back east they just trying to lock all the brothers up, man. And you know, and I'm I'm not I'm not I'm on my medication, so I ain't gonna even really cuss. But I'd be telling man, you know what, dude, you ignorant, homie, because out here on the southwest, Arizona, New Mexico, California, um, where where else is out west? They locking up the Mexicans, dude. Let me tell you something, man. When I was in the pen, I felt such sadness, man. The, the way they locking up Mexicans, homie. The, the narrative in this country, bro. They just locking up Mexicans like, dude, it's the thing to do. The Mexicans run the prison, specifically Serenos. And I'm not trying to be disrespectful to you Northerners. I'm just saying when I was in the pen, like, long as we was up north, like, even in Folsom, they had Serenos, bro. And them motherfuckers was... Them motherfuckers was rioters, dude. Like, I'm telling you, most of the time we was locked down because the, the Mexicans was going at it. Because, dude, up north, the the, the northerners, their numbers kind of match the southerners. Let's say, I don't know, maybe it's equal. I don't know, maybe there's more northerners. The southerners didn't care. But I'm telling you, as I took the bus rides and I went from uh, I went from uh, New Folsom to Avenal, the southerners' numbers to do. The southerners, there's so many southern Mexicans in prison, dude. It's like a fucking zombie movie. I'm like, Jesus Christ. Does the southern numbers increase, bro? They ran a narrative on a yard. That's just my story. I'm not trying to be talking about... I'm telling you what I lived. The southerners ran. You didn't want to piss off the southerners, homie. And then that's why when I got to Avenal, the southern Mexicans told the northern Mexicans, you need to know that you motherfuckers will come out on this yard with your shirt off. And this was in the, the middle of the summer, too, like July, 120 degrees. Because in the summer, um, Mexicans... Mexican dudes and white dudes and, and others have their shirts off. Black dudes is the only ones I'm just saying that keep because the black dudes. And I ask them, hey, man, why do you keep your – they be wearing these big-ass blue jean jackets. Why you what your blue jean jacket on? Because they don't want the motherfuckers to see how swole they are or how not swole they are. Because a month – you got these big prison blue jean jackets on, and motherfucker can't tell how swole you are. I was swole as fuck. I walked around the yard with my shirt off all the fucking time, man. And so when the Southerners told the – the Northerners, you can't come out with the yard. And then when I told when I told the blacks from Seaside, you know what I mean? And I'm going to make a video about how I became a shot When I told the blacks from Seaside, man, fuck them. Because when I was in the county jail, they had there was a riot between the fucking Northerners and the blacks. And they told the blacks a new asshole. I said, fuck them. So once they, they didn't have the blacks riot with them, their numbers weren't big enough. And I'm just telling you my story. All the Northerners fucking PC'd up, man. They PC'd the fuck up because, dude, the Southerners, there's so many of them. And they was all beat. I used to hear them in Spanish. I used to hear them in Spanish, man, when I was at when I was at Mule Creek. And they'd be telling, they'd be, they'd be, they'd be, they'd be whispering through the fucking the vent. Hey, man, on the unlock, man, whoever is fucking Southerners knife doesn't have blood on it, homie. When we come out of the fucking shoe, we're going we're gonna to put work in on you, man. So learn to trust yourself and then only give a person trust like an onion, dude. Like, you know, if, 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 if a dude says something to you, like he tells you what he's in there for and you see his paperwork, you verify that. Okay, you can verify that. You trust that he's in there for that. If the dude says to you that, you know, this is how it works in prison because it's your first time and then you, you kind of see what he's saying is true, then you trust him at that level. You trust him at increments, bro. And at any time he is not congruent, you pull back your trust, man. 